Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Rocket Stock. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create the VHS look inside of After Effects and how we can accent it with a free preset and assets. All right, so I recently did a VHS look tutorial for Premiere Pro, and from that I got a lot of requests for how to create the same look inside of After Effects. But since we are gonna be working inside of After Effects, we can take a little bit of a deeper dive into this look, and I'll show you guys a few other accents we can create to kind of add to that VHS look. Before we get started, I do want to mention you can download the free VHS preset and VHS assets from the Rocket Stock blog if you want to use those to follow along. There'll be a link for that in the description for this video. Alright, let me go ahead and walk you through creating the VHS look. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new composition. It's going to be 1920 by 1080. I'm just going to call it VHS. And go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to drag in some HD footage I've got here. What I really like about Lumetri Color is because it has so many options, we can substitute it for a lot of other effects we might have to use in the past. So let's first come over here to Basic Correction, and we're just gonna kinda of dial in the VHS look. So the first thing I wanna do is add in some contrast. I'm gonna set this at 55. Next, I wanna bring the white levels down, so I'm gonna come out here to whites, and I'm gonna type in negative 50. So now I'm gonna go ahead and close up the Basic Correction. Let's toggle down the Creative tab here. And I'm gonna increase the Faded Film right here, I'm gonna type in 30. And then for sharpen, we're gonna de-sharpen this for the time being, we're gonna sharpen it back a little bit later. It's gonna kinda of add that classic VHS sharpening. But for the time being, I'm gonna add in negative 70 on sharpening here. And for vibrance, I'm gonna take this down to negative 30. Now on the toning down here, you don't have to do this. What I typically do is move the shadow tint just a little bit over kind of into the purple hues. Again, that's not required, it's just something I like to do when I'm creating my VHS looks. I'm gonna go ahead and close up the creative tab here. Let's toggle down the curves options. So what I wanna do on this first curve is I'm gonna just select it at the top. I'm gonna to drag it straight down and then I'm gonna move it back over to kinda of line back up with the original curves line there. You can see, so we're just kinda of clipping off that top portion. Now let's go over to the green curve. I'm just gonna select it at the very top and just move it up a little bit, just kinda of make it a little more imperfect. And we'll do the same thing with the blue curve. We'll just move it actually down though. So you can kinda of see the way I split that up there. Then we can go ahead and close up the curves options. And let's toggle down the vignette down here. And for the amount, I just like to type this in at negative one. You know, see it gives us a heavy vignette around the outside, but if we do kind of crop in on this for the classic four by three for a VHS look, you won't really see that darkening too much on the edges, but it will kind of accent it nicely. All right, so now we can go ahead and close up the vignette. And the next thing we need to create is a little bit of color shifting on the image, and the way we're gonna do that is with the channel blur effect. So let's come here to effect, and under blur, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna select channel blur. We're actually gonna use two different copies of channel blur, but on the first one, I wanna come over here to red blurriness. I'm just gonna set this at 22. And you can see how that kind of blurred the red channel on everything, kind of gives us this soft kind of red look. Now what we wanna do next is we wanna go ahead and turn on repeat edge pixels, that way it looks correct around the edge of our image. But then as I zoom in here, we're gonna change the blur dimensions from horizontal and vertical to just be vertical. So now you can see it's just blurring it vertically. And now it's time for us to add in the second channel blur. So let's come here to effect. Then for blur, we'll go to channel blur again. We're gonna blur this now on the blue channel, but I actually like to blur the red channel a little bit more as well, just to kind of add into that imperfection. So for red blurriness, I'm gonna type in 14. And for blue blurriness, I'm gonna type in 30. Then again, repeat edge pixels. And we're gonna set this on horizontal. So now if I zoom in here, you can see, we just kind of get a little bit of that color shifting going on. You can really see it there on the rear view where you have the red on top and blue on the sides. So it's kind of emulating almost like a blurred RGB split on this footage. Now the next thing we need to do is add in kind of that artificial sharpening look. And for that we're gonna use Unsharp Mask. So I'm gonna come over to Effect. And under Blur and Sharpen, we're gonna select Unsharp Mask. And for the amount, I'm gonna set that to be 100. And for the radius, and this is really gonna give it the look, I'm gonna increase this all the way to 12. You can see how that really sets it into overdrive for that kind of post sharpening. It makes that red and blue color shifting stand out a lot more as well. If you don't want to dial it all the way up to 12, again, that's up to you. You can dial in your own custom look, but that is kind of the look I found that gives me a very VHS-ish appearance on the footage. So that completes creating the VHS look. Now we can accent this even more. So I'm coming to the project panel and I've imported in the VHS assets. And again, these are included with the project file. So I can give this more of a VHS look with these assets. And the first thing I want to drag in here is going to be one of these aspect ratios. I'm just going to drag and drop this on top. You will see it just crops in on our footage. And if you wanted to manually crop in on this, you could. You could just come into composition settings and just adjust your original composition to be a four by three aspect ratio. But in my case here, I'm actually just gonna use this four by three overlay. 
Next, I can bring in this VHS grain. I'm just gonna drag and drop this underneath that four by three aspect ratio. And I'm gonna set this to be a overlay blending mode. You can see this adds a little bit of subtle film grain on top of this. And finally, there is a static video accent here if I drag and drop this in. And I can set that accent to be a screen blending mode. And I'll just go ahead and ramp preview this really quickly. And you can see that it just gives us a quick static element that we can use throughout the video. Now to keep this moving with the VHS look, a lot of VHS looks have an imperfect kind of shake going on with the footage, and we can recreate that as well. So I'm gonna right click here and do a new adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and name this VHS shake. And I'm actually gonna move it to above everything, but just below that four by three aspect ratio. And on that adjustment layer, we're gonna add the effect transform. So under effect, I'm gonna here to distort, and we're gonna select transform. And the reason I'm gonna apply the shaking onto the transform effect as opposed to directly to my footage is that this way the grain and the static elements and everything else can also be shifted around with the transform effect. So for position, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option on the Mac and I'm gonna click on that stopwatch and you'll see it turn red. This allows us to type in an expression. So I'm just gonna type in wiggle. And then open parentheses, I'm gonna type in seven, that means seven times per second, and then comma and then two, and so seven times per second, I want this to move two pixels. It's gonna be very subtle, but just kind of gives us that feel of VHS. Then I hit close parentheses right there and just click away from there. And if I go ahead and scroll through this, we can see we're getting a little bit of subtle movement. You can really notice it if you look right here at the very bottom. We can see how that's shifting around, so just kind of adding in that little bit of shifting, almost as if the tape's kind of slipping on the playback. Now, in order for us to get rid of that black line at the very bottom down there, we're gonna come over here to scale. I'm just gonna scale this up to 101. And that'll just ensure we don't get any of that black lines at the top or bottom when it's shaking around. And we can see how that just adds a little bit of subtle movement to the footage. If you wanted to increase it, you know, I might recommend coming down here and changing this two to maybe like a three or a four, but it will start looking pretty shaky pretty quick. Let me go ahead and see what a four looks like. Now you can see that it has a little bit more of a noticeable shake to it. Now another thing that's really iconic with VHS is the tape wrinkle, which is kind of like almost like a distortion line that kind of runs up and down on the footage. And we can create one of those as well. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna close up that VHS shake and I'm gonna right click and we're gonna do another adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna rename this tape wrinkle. And I'm gonna actually move that adjustment layer just above my footage, so actually below the VHS look. And on that adjustment layer, I'm gonna go ahead and apply another transform effect. So effect and then distort and transform. And this effect requires a little bit of adjusting in order to make it look correct. So I'm gonna come over here under uniform scale. I'm gonna uncheck that and for scale height, I'm actually gonna bring this all the way up to 1000. And you're gonna see it's gonna look very distorted right now. What I wanna do is I wanna select that adjustment layer right here on this bottom point and I'm just gonna drag up. And you can see how it's kinda of creating this slice here. And we just wanna kinda of create this at the same height we want our tape wrinkle to be. Usually it's something about this size here. Now the problem we have right now is if I go ahead and move this around, you're gonna see it doesn't really react correctly to our footage. It's not really giving us that tape wrinkle appearance when I move it around. And we want that to update whenever it's moving. So the way we can do that is if we come over here to anchor point, I'm gonna go ahead and hold alt and click on the stopwatch. Again, option click if you're on a Mac. And that's gonna open up the expression controls. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna navigate down here and you're gonna see the transform effect here. We have the anchor point, we have this little pick whip. And if I keep scrolling down, we wanna come down here to transform and this is the transform for the actual adjustment layer and you're gonna see position. So what we wanna do is we wanna link this pick whip. So just select it and drag all the way down to transform here for position. And we wanna link those two together. So they can be a little bit confusing there because we have an effect name transform and we have the transform properties for the adjustment layer. But again, we're linking the anchor point from the transform effect to the position of our actual adjustment layer. So when we do that, if I navigate back up here to the adjustment layer and I move it around, you're gonna see now it's updating wherever we position this over our footage and kind of giving us that tape wrinkle effect. Now I'm gonna control Z to undo that movement. And what I actually like to do to dial this in a little bit more is add a second transform effect to the adjustment layer. So come back up here to effect, distort, and then transform. And we're gonna uncheck uniform scale. And for the height, again, we're gonna bring this all the way up to a thousand to really stretch those pixels out. You can see how that looks now. So I'm just gonna select the adjustment layer. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag up here to the top. And I'm just gonna create a keyframe here for position. So I'll hit P on that adjustment layer, create a keyframe and just move down here a little bit in time. 
I'm just gonna drag this all the way down to the bottom. And now let's go ahead and RAM preview this and see what this looks like. So now we can see the tape wrinkle come through on our footage. Now one thing you might notice is right up here at the top, you'll see we kind of get this little gray bar. And the reason that's happening is because we have the scale on that adjustment layer cranked up so high, it's scaling past the actual footage. And I'll show you a way we can fix that. So if we come down here to our footage, we wanna apply the effect CC Repetile. So I'm just gonna type in CC and then Repetile. And I'm gonna drag that onto my footage. And we wanna set this to be Unfold. And just go ahead and expand up. I'll type in 200 and expand down 200. And you'll see that got rid of that little gray bar that was appearing at the top, just on that very first frame. And it should at the bottom as well, get rid of that. What's cool about creating the custom tape wrinkle effect is that we can obviously control the speed of it. We can control exactly when it's gonna come through on our footage. And you can see even right now, I can control the scale of it. I wanna keep adjusting that. Maybe just something thinner. And then if I wanted to create multiple copies, I just select the tape wrinkle, go ahead and do Control D or Command D on a Mac to duplicate it. And I'll just hit U and I'll just offset the position of this. And I might even adjust the size of this so we can create multiple copies of this really quickly. So now you can see what that looks like. Finally, if we want to go ahead and adjust the frame rate of our footage, or if we want to keyframe it to where it's changing over time, maybe to add in like glitching, we can do that using the posterized time effect. So I'm going to right click here and do a new adjustment layer. And I want this to be at the very top of everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and rename that frame rate. And with that adjustment layer selected, I'm going to come over to the effects and presets. And I'm going to type in posterize. And then I'm going to select the posterize time effect and apply that to that adjustment layer. And this allows us to basically just change the frame rate without actually adjusting it in the composition settings. So I'm just going to change this now to something to be like 12. And when I play that back, we can now see the footage has a stutter to it. What I really like about the posterized time effect though is you can keyframe the frame rate so you can adjust it over time. So if you had a portion of your video where you had more glitches, you could keyframe this to where the frame rate really drops off and then maybe comes back to normal. All right guys, really quickly I want to show you where you can install the VHS After Effects preset. On PC or Mac, just navigate to your Documents folder, then you'll see Adobe. Find your version of After Effects and navigate into User Presets. And you can see I've already dragged and dropped the VHS effect inside of there. I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works inside of After Effects. So I've just got an adjustment layer here, and I'm going to come over here under Effects and Presets, and I'm going to toggle down the Animation Presets, and then User Presets, and there's the VHS effect. So I'll just drag and drop this here, and now you can see we've got that VHS look immediately, and it's a nice drag and drop solution. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial creating the VHS look inside of After Effects. Again, make sure you download the free preset and VHS assets. And while you're there, check out the other tutorials that we have on the Rocket Stock blog. This has been Charles Jager with Rocket Stock. Thanks for watching.